Blessings, friends, and loved ones. This video is something I just wrote, just finished writing today. It is March 26, 2021, and this is all about Passover. This is really something powerful. Um, if you've ever struggled wondering about the blood, you know, you're thinking this blood sacrifice and how does this make sense, especially in our current day and age where we're thinking of like, really, blood? Like, how does that do anything? How does that work? It's something that's not really talked about. We just kind of take on faith like, oh, you know, apply the blood or plead the blood or, you know, claim the blood or, you know, this idea of the blood of Christ that did atonement. But how does that work? This that I wrote, Praise be to God explains this in, in ways that I, I believe are profound. Just want to share that Passover 2021 begins tomorrow, Saturday, March 27th in the evening until Sunday, April 4th. So this is a season of Passover and I have other teachings on Passover. Maybe I'll put some videos in the, in the link here below in the description below. So I don't want to get into a teaching here. I want to read you what I wrote because that's what this is about. And the title of it is called The Promise of Passover. Here we go. Actually, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? Let's let's give glory to God and let's ask for God's guidance. Let's quickly pray. Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for what you're sharing. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your way. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for your blood and your body and all that you've done for us the ways that you've given us to redeem us from the curse of the law, the ways that you've saved us, the way that you pull us out of the pit, the way you deliver us out of the hands of the enemy, the ways that you love us and have mercy on us, the ways you've forgiven us, all that you do for us in this season and how we honor you and remember you and celebrate you this holiday is for now, it's forever, and I'm incredibly grateful. Lord God, I pray that this word, I pray that this message that you're sharing would truly become revelation and would just refresh us, renew us, and give us insight and revelation unlike ever before. I thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name, amen. All right. The promise of Passover. Death. You are to pass over our homes, our lives, and our soul. In Yeshua's name, I declare and decree and command, you are to pass over. Death and damnation, you have no hold over me. You have no hold over us, those of us who are cleansed by Yeshua's blood, the blood of the Lamb, of Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He who is the Messiah. Just as in the time of Moses and of the Israelites in Egypt, when they applied the blood to the doorposts of their homes, so is it now when we figuratively and spiritually apply the blood to the doorposts of our hearts. Eternal death and eternal damnation are done away with because of the blood of the Lamb, the Pascal Lamb. Oh. Almost lost my spot here, getting so excited. What happened on Passover, Pesach, that day so many years ago? Why was there an exchange that took place from death to life? When the light of the world became the light that would walk us through darkness unto life. When all of mankind would be so powerfully reached that their very souls would be forgiven. When the breath of life used a deity born of flesh to transform our lives and all of mankind. When the earth quaked and roared, while the veil between our God's temple and our soul was torn. When the fabric of sin and death was shaken. When a fire was ignited that would continually burn bright for all to receive a flame of hope and absolution. When winds swept through from all four corners of the earth to cleanse all of unrighteousness. When living waters poured out from the living word, that living word who has a name, 
His name is Yeshua, Jesus, Lord. When these waters were poured out of the Messiah as he was pierced on the tree, those living waters came down unto the earth to christen, to baptize, to immerse us into holiness, unto a new life. What happened on Passover that day so many years ago? The blood. Why blood? Blood and fire and water and air and freedom and liberty. What is this supernatural idea? As thunder and lightning seemingly come out of nowhere, so is this exchange that would blast through every dark, evil, deceptive, destructive, and morbid fortress. Yeshua was instituted as our strong tower. His blood was, is, the moat, the goat, the antidote. But why, but how? Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Life is in the blood. That is why the Lord could not just appear here on earth as a spirit and accomplish his redemptive plan. He needed a host in order for his heavenly body to move from one dimension to ours. He needed Miriam. He needed Mary. This was the entrance of infinity, God, entering our temporal fallen existence, earth, when word became flesh. As his spirit is our catalyst from death unto life, so is blood to our bodies in the natural. As his spirit flows in our body and moves within us, so does blood flow in our body in the natural. Just as his spirit enters us and merges with us, so is as our mother sharing her natural blood and her body in order to sustain ours. As is his spirit is what breathes life into us and radiates him out from us is as natural blood, which provides oxygen to every cell and produces energy. As is his spirit is our communication device from him unto us. So is how natural blood transfers information within our body and influences cellular activity. As is his spirit is not a thing, but is an entity, a being. His spirit exists with autonomy and memory. So is as blood that remembers, that has a voice and a purpose. Genesis 4, chapter 4, verse 10 says, The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your, brother, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. This was in reference to Cain and Abel. As is his spirit is what moves across people and places, much as the wind breathing on fire, so is the blood of Yeshua, as it is figuratively and spiritually applied to us. There is a transcendent transmutation which causes a divine reaction of atonement. That moment when we become the righteousness of God in Christ, when all our humanity is exchanged for his glory into a child of God, where we are washed clean with the washing of the water of the word, Yeshua, who is the word, where Yahweh made a way for us to have true relationship with him. Our spirits through Yeshua's blood are able to travel back to Yahweh and his kingdom without ever physically leaving where we stand. Without our host, the Son of God, Yeshua, who is the very vehicle by which we enter the Holy of Holies, this would have never been made possible. We are justified. Praise be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As his blood cleanses us of all unrighteousness, as it draws in his goodness and expels and casts out the bad, so is the function of our natural blood that flows throughout us. As his blood is essential to our redemption and salvation, to our eternal life, so too in the natural, blood is critically and absolutely essential for life, 
for someone to live. As his spirit is not visible to the naked eye, yet transforms and manifests, this is how blood is to us in the supernatural, transforming and influencing. It is critical, it is critically important to recognize, therefore, that blood has life and power. It matters what we do with blood and how we handle it. Yeshua is the sacrifice that took care of all sacrifices needed for atonement. With that said, there are others that sacrifice various things and beings and have ceremony with such. This is not what God calls us to do. He is the one and only sacrifice. Any other blood sacrifice is essentially antichrist. Any spiritual and ceremonial activity with blood can influence us and transform us in negative and dark ways. Therefore, we must pay attention. Applying the blood on Passover. When a sperm and an egg merge at conception, at conception, a zygote, then blastocyst, then embryo form. In these beginning few weeks, the future baby simply lays implanted in the mother's blood, not yet having the blood transmission occur from mother. This is as the blood being put up against the doorposts and lintels of the Israelites' homes on Passover. There is an expectancy and an anticipation. This application of the lamb's blood is in preparation for what is to come. The miracle is in the process. There is a seed promise of hope and life, yet even more so with our Lord and his deliverance. Here on earth, at times, a babe in the natural world doesn't come to fruition. But in the spiritual realm, once conceived, that baby never ever goes away. That spirit came to pass upon conception, and that fire can never be put out. So it is when you apply the blood, when you use the blood of Yeshua. It is an act that has perpetual effect, that has supernatural activity attached to it. All the heavens and the earth hear the sound of the placement of that blood. All of eternity vibrates with the explosion of our spirits breaking through into a new dimension as we are seated in heavenly places. This was all begun when Yeshua completed the greatest act of any man, past and future. He overcame death and the grave. He took the keys of Sheol, of hell, and death. He became the propitiation for our sins. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of Sheol, hell, and of death. Why apply the blood? Why atone for sins? Sin in its essence is separation from God. God is a holy God. When we fell to this earth, we in essence fell away from him. We were put in a different dimension. Just as Yeshua had to come through Miriam, a host, in order to affect us, we have to go in the opposite direction. We have to go through Yeshua, a host, in order to get close to God, to be in relationship to God, to be re reconciled with him. So now we better understand the scripture of John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Had we not been born again, thereby having gained access to the Father, then our bodies would have been eternally lost when we physically die. Instead, we create lasting pathways for our spirits to remain with the Father forever. Receiving eternal life. That is the promise of Passover. So as you celebrate and honor this day and season, we take refuge in the salvation he provided for us many, many years ago. We renew our zeal and our dedication to the one who created us and the one who loves us. Let us renew our vows as we take part in Passover. Hallelujah. Shemei Yisrael, Adonai Eleheinu, Adonai Echad.
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4. And I have two things of suggested reading if you want to read more. Hebrews chapter 10 and Isaiah chapter 53. And that's what I wrote. Praise be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray that you have a wonderful, peaceful, joyous, fulfilling Passover and Passover season. May God bless you and keep you. And with everything going on in the world, let us rest in knowing that our Lord holds us. He loves us and he makes a way for us. God bless you. In Yeshua's name, amen.